Welcome back, everyone. So today, we're diving into the fascinating world of artificial intelligence and recommendation systems. Now, have you ever wondered how Netflix seems to magically suggest the perfect shows based on your viewing history? Well, in this video, I'll show you how to build a Netflix-style AI recommendation system using Python. Now, whether you're a beginner or a seasoned coder, I break it all down step by step, explaining concepts like TF-IDF, cosine similarity, and feature extraction, so you can understand how these algorithms work and apply them to your own projects. We'll be using a Netflix dataset, transforming text descriptions into meaningful numerical representations, and building a system that recommends similar shows just like the big streaming platforms do. Now let's dive into the magic of AI-powered recommendations. So I'm currently on Google's website. It's called colab.research.google.com because it makes it easy to get started programming. And that's where I will be programming in this video. If you want to program along with me, you can go on here. You can log in using your Google account and get started writing your Python code immediately. All right, so go ahead, click on file, click on new notebook in drive, and this will create a new tab for you. And eventually a new cell will pop up for you. And in this cell, I am going to import the libraries that I need for this program. So I'm going to import pandas as PD and then from sklearn.feature underscore extraction dot text I'm going to import not count vectorizer but tfidf vectorizer and then from sklearn.metrics.pairwise I want to import cosine similarity. So Google got this pretty close I'm just going to tab over and I'm going to change this count vectorizer to be TF, TF IDF vectorizer. Okay. And then I'm going to run this cell by clicking this button here to the left. And this will let me know if I made any mistakes in this cell. So while it's thinking, I'm going to go ahead and create a new cell using that code button in the top left. And here is where we will load the Netflix data set. And also, I see that this cell is good because we get a little check mark at the top. So that first cell is good to go. All right, so I'm going to create a variable called data, and I'm going to set it equal to pd.read underscore csv, and we're going to input the name of the file that we want to read in. So let's go ahead and upload that file first. Click on this folders icon, click upload, and I'm going to choose Netflix underscore titles.csv, and I get a little warning, and that's okay. So I'm going to click OK here, and now we can see that the data set has been loaded. So let me put the name here, which is Netflix underscore titles.csv okay and let's exit out of that left pane and now let's go ahead and show the data so I'm going to type data.head and we're going to show the first six rows of data so I'm putting the number six here and let's go ahead and run this cell to take a look at our data set so we can see all of these columns we have show ID we have the type so movie TV shows we have the title, we have the director, and we see we have some NAND values or not a number value. These are blank values in the data set. All right, we have cast, we have country, date added, release year, rating, duration, listed in, and description. All right, so now you kind of get an idea of what this data set looks like. Let's go ahead and create a new cell. And in this cell, we're going to combine the relevant features that we want into a single text column. So I'm going to call this column features. All right. And I'm going to set it, I'm going to set it equal to data. I kind of like what Google put here. I'm just going to tap over. And basically what it's combining is the director, the cast, the listed in, and, and the description. So I'm going to get rid of that listed in. Okay, I like the cast, I like the description, and instead of the instead of the director, I'm gonna do the title. Okay, but you can also put director there if you want to. But this right here will create our features column, and we're just combining certain features or certain columns together in one big mass of text. Okay. All right, so let me go ahead and put that in comments here. Combine relevant relevant features into a single text column. All right, let's go ahead and run this cell. And I got an error message. So let's see, where is it at? It's right 
right here. So we have plus plus. So let me get rid of that. And let me run this again. And now that's good. All right, let's go ahead and create a new cell. And now in this cell, I want to handle those missing values. So handle the missing values by replacing them with an empty string. Empty string. All right. And Google has already suggested how to do this, which is great. I'm just going to tab over. So we're going to set data features equal to data features dot fill in a and we're going to fill the NA values or the NAN values, those NAN values with an empty string. OK. So let's go ahead and run this. And now we've handled those missing values in the data set. Let's create a new cell. OK, so now in this cell, we want to convert that text data into numerical representations using TFIDF. And TFIDF stands for Term Frequency Inverse Document Frequency. All right, so let me go ahead and put that here. Convert, convert the text data into numerical representation or representations using TFIDF. And again, that stands for a term frequency inverse inverse document frequency. Okay. So I'm going to create a variable called vectorizer. And I'm going to set it equal to TFIDF vectorizer. I kind of like what Google has put here. I'm just going to tab over. I'm going to add stop words here. So stop underscore words and set it equal to English. All right, so this way the, the vectorizer ignores common words like the and is those type of words. So it's just going to ignore it. OK. And then Google created a, another variable for us called feature vectors. I like that. Uh, I call it feature matrix. It's really more like a matrix. So feature matrix. And we'll set it equal to vectorizer dot fit transform data features. So this right here will change our text into numerical values, positive numerical values. All right. So let's go ahead and run this cell. And let's create a new cell. All right. So now in this cell, I'm going to create a function to recommend similar shows based on the cosine similarity. All right. So let's call this function recommend underscore show. All right, I like Google suggesting there. I'm just going to put title here. So we're going to input some title into the function, right? Because we want to find similar shows to whatever title we're putting in. OK, so first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to find the index of the show of the title the show slash title in the data set. OK, so I'm going to create a variable called index. And I'm going to set it equal to data where the data title is equal to title dot index at position zero. So I like that. Let's just tab over. OK, and we have to do index at position zero because we want just that number. If if we don't put that, then we're going to get a, uh, a, a array or a list. OK. All right. And actually, yeah. OK, so that's good. So next, what do we want to do? We want to. We want to get the similarities, so. Here I'm going to calculate the similarities or the similarity scores between the shows or between this show 
and all other shows. All right, so let's call this similarities. Similarities, it, it could have been called similarity scores as well. And I'm gonna set this equal to cosine underscore similarity. And we're going to take in the feature matrix index. And then we're gonna put in the feature matrix. So we're gonna put in our, our, our show that we like and every other show in the, the matrix here, okay? And remember that, that these are vectors, right? So the feature matrix is a vector, okay? All right, next, I do want to get the indices of the top five most similar shows. So I like what Google put there and that works. Let me explain a little bit about, I guess, cosine similarity. So it uses the cosine, you know, cosine waves. It uses cosine for you, you mathematicians out there. So if, if theta is equal to zero degrees, then cosine of zero degrees would be equal to one. So given two vectors like X and Y vectors, if they overlap, then, then they are similar and their degrees are zero. Okay, so we get one from that or 100% similarity. And then if the vectors X and Y are dissimilar, then our theta would be 90 degrees and cosine of theta equal to 90 degrees or cosine of 90 degrees is equal to zero or 0% 0 similarity. All right, so that's kind of how this works. And all the vectors are positive. So in this case, we're looking only at quadrant one and cosine of theta in quadrant one will always be a number from zero to one, right? Okay, so hopefully I didn't scare anyone with that explanation and hopefully I explained it decently. I'm not sure if I did. But anyways, we're gonna continue. So we want to get the, the indices of the top five most similar shows. All right, so to do this, I need to sort the similarities and then retrieve the indices of the top five most similar shows. And I can sort them using arc sort function or method. So let's create a variable called similar underscore indices. Okay, and we're gonna set it equal to exactly what Google put here. So I'm just gonna tab over. So we're setting it equal to similarities.arc sort. All right, and we are putting in position zero because uh, otherwise we get a two dimensional list or array. And then it's gonna be from, or it's gonna be the, the top five most similar, the top five most similar shows here, or top five most similar indices, right? So we're getting the top five most similar indices. And hence, in that case, it is the show, all right? But it's, it's not the show yet. So we have to, we have to put the title of the show and here, Google put, get the titles of the top five most similar shows. So it created a variable called similar shows. Instead of equal to data dot by location, similar indices title, similar indices title, and then it set it to a list, okay? So it got all those got the top five most similar shows. It got their indices here, right? And now we are getting the title of the shows and we're setting it to a list. So it's gonna basically be in an array. And then we're returning similar shows. All right, so let's go ahead and run this cell. Let's create a new cell. And now in this cell, we are just going to print the recommendations. All right, so I'm gonna put print here and then we're going to put in the function recommend recommend show, left parentheses, right parentheses. And let's put in a Netflix show like Stranger Things, okay? So let's go ahead and run this. And it prints that list that, that we talked about, the similar shows list. 
and it prints their titles. So we should see five titles here. One, two, three, four, five. So the most similar shows to Stranger Things in this data set is Prank Encounters, Things Heard and Seen, Homefront, Safe Haven, Beyond Stranger Things, right? So just like that, we've created a Netflix-like recommendation system. All right, so that's it. Thanks for watching. And if you enjoy content like this, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Give this video a thumbs up and ring that bell icon so you never miss an upload. And if you want to get access to the code or a data set or support the channel, then check out my Patreon, which is patreon.com slash computer science. And I will leave a link for that in the description below. And remember that this is just fun and educational. So feel free to tweak the code and make it your own. Like, for example, you can add the director in your feature data set, right? So I hope you all have a great and wonderful day. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it educational. And I will see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.